Welcome in that uh, new video which shows how we can use the layout to uh, track some objects and uh, have some characters following it. So here what I have is um, a locator that um, I applied keyframes on so I put some random orientation. You'll notice that uh, at the moment only the y-axis is keyframed. We'll speak about that a bit later. Uh, but uh, this strategy, as I'm showing it at the moment, um, if you want to make sure that your entity is not exactly at the same position as the locator, you, um, you can only use translations and uh, around the y-axis uh, keyframes. So keep in mind that um, obviously that cache proxy which handles the character can also be keyframed if you want to. So here the translation and the rotation, they are um, locked. But if I unlock those, you will be able to change and probably and uh, also keyframes your characters if you want. But let's say you just want to apply that transformation to only one character in your cache. You may want to use, rather than use the global transform for everybody, you may want to use um, the layout tool to track some objects. So in my scene, I've got the locator, I've got some keyframes, which uh, I can see the nodes there, and I'll start building my layout. So let's open the layout tool there and um, let's uh, start by creating a selector in which I'm going to select uh, all my entities. So here I'm just having one. If I had multiples, it will select multiple entities. Uh, but I can also specify the ID of the entity I want to select. I uh, will not change anything into my scene here. Then I want to apply a translation node. And if we pay attention to the translation, we can see that the translate attributes XYZ um, as some use keyframes attribute, which means that I can specify a per frame value there. So I'm going to enable keyframes. And as soon as I enable keyframes, now I can see my array has changed. I still have my X, Y, Z values there, but now I'm also adding a frame value and a plus here, which I can, um, uh, press to create a new keyframe. Um, obviously here we're not going to create the keyframes manually in the scene. We're going to take advantage of what's already created. But keep in mind that if you want to manually input those or using the API, the Python API, you can do this as well. So if I want to automatically um, drive those keyframes from my keyframes I'm having here within my scene, what I can do is uh, right click on the node and amongst the options I'm having is create locators for keyframe attributes which means it will go through all the attributes for which we've been um, checking the use keyframes attributes and it will create a locator for that. So here I right click on it and we can see that now there's a GLM layout node one, which is my node uh, here uh, with ID one and the attribute translate. So that locator, which is in the scene, which is actually here now is um, uh, exist in the scene. And if I want, I can drive its position and um, the local offset, which will be applied to that position will also be applied to my characters. So let's check how we can do this. So I'm going to select my locator here, uh, my source locator, which is animated here. It's a locator, but it can be whatever you want to. Uh, it's basically a transform node, right? Uh, I'm going to select my uh, layout node translate here. And what I'll do is open the node editor filter. I'm just going to keep what I need to be uh, keep here. And um, I can see for some reason I'm having some scale X, Y, Z. So let's remove those. Uh, let's only select those translate keyframes there, locator there. Just keep what we need to keep it um, cleaned up. Okay, so that's my locator. We can see that at the moment is being driven by uh, those translate X, Y here in Z keyframes. And what we'll just do is uh, replicate that exact same setup there. So here, for example, we're going to expand on the layout node translate. Uh, layout node one translate, which is once again the locator we just created. It has also translate attributes. So what we'll do is we'll grab the output from translate X. We're gonna uh, connect it to here, the uh, locator one translate Y. So those are keyframes, and what I'm just doing is copying key that this exact same keyframes array 
to my character layout node. And once again, I'm going to grab that output here and connect that to my uh, translate XYZ. What I should expect from here is having a layout node translate translation attribute, which are now keyframe with the exact same number of keyframes than the one I'm having here. So that's my layout node one translate. This is my locator one translate. I would expect those two locators to be aligned when they move. And you may already discover that your layout character will be moving accordingly to what we've been specifying here. So we're having the first step being set up properly here, which is translation. When my characters are translated, translation is now correct. So, okay, this is the first step, right? So now how do we go further with the next step, which is, oh, and just a quick note. Um, if we pay attention now to that translation node, we'll see that my translation node has seven keys because it has read those keyframes directly from Maya and it has input them, copied them directly from here. So if I was about to delete the locator for the keyframe attribute, it will work because those values have been copied. But while that locator exists, I can still edit those keyframes and that will edit my translation node. So while the connection is still there, I can um, uh, take advantage of it. If I delete the locators, it will still be copied here. But if you change those keyframes later, that will not be taken into account here, right? So, okay, let's now create a um, rotation node. So we want to align to rotation as well. So here I'm going to go into the create a rotate node, uh, go into the rotate attribute, and I'm going to say I want to use keyframes there. So I want to use keyframes for the rotation. And I also want to make sure that I'm going to use the pivot. And I also want to say that I want to use keyframes for the pivot. I want to use keyframes for the pivot as well because my local orientation will change based on the locator, locator positions and I want my layout to replicate this as well. Now that I've been checking these two boxes, I'll do exactly the same thing that I did before, which is I'll create locators for the keyframe attributes. So now I'm having GLM layout node 2. So this is the ID of the rotate node. I'm having two uh, um, locators being created. I'm having the rotate locator and the pivot locator. So now we're good. So I'll do exactly the same thing that we did for the translation for now the pivots. So I'll go into my node editor after having selected my um, uh, keyframe translate XYZ. Um, I want to grab my pivot uh, transform. So transform XYZ, sorry about that. Okay. So this is my layout node to pivot. Well, ideally, I'll write the script to do this for me, right? But here, I just want to show you what's the actual um, behind the hood for that. So for the pivots, I'm going to connect, once again, the translate X, my um, couple of keyframes I'm having on my scene for the translations. Make sure that I connect them in the right order. This is Z. So let's put this into Z and this is Y. Okay. If I go into my uh, rotate low, um, layout node now, I can see I'm having seven keys and still one key folder uh, rotate. So last step will be to take into account that rotate X, Y, Z, that layout node to rotate, go into the node editor and make those final connections. So here we are. Up. Okay. And here there's a kind of a small subtleties there that uh, I want you to, oh, wait, that's that node there. Uh, that I want you to uh, know is that what we take into account is only the translations of those locators. So I agree here that for a rotation, you probably would like to input some rotation directly into um, that ro those rotate attributes, but um, that's just uh, the way it works at the moment that we have to you know, take into account X, Y, Z instead of rotation there. So what you'll see into the viewport will not really replicate um, that, that animation for that locator will not really replicate orientations. But once again, that's just the way it works. So let's put them into the right order there. Let's expand them so we can see um, the output for a minute. Here and there. Okay, so as I said, we want to take into account 
those keyframes for our rotation and we want to plug them into the translation attributes. So it will create automatically a unique conversion because that's a translation on one side and this is rotation on the other side. Uh, but it's not a big deal. Um, you don't really care because it's doing everything for you anyway, automatically. So we'll grab this, connect it here. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that now you're having seven rotate keys on the rotation. And also if we were about to, uh, you know, check what's going on for that character, you will see that both translation, rotation and the pivots are going to be fine. So on your side, what you may notice, so let me check this here is that maybe the characters are not really aligned. So a quick word regarding this, I go back to the default settings for Maya. So I'll put that back to tangents to linear. Come on. Tangents, linear. Not really sure what's not working. No, it's not. Okay, it's flying, sorry. Anyway, um, by default, when you keyframe something within your scene, uh, it tends to be into uh, the linear tangent mode. And um, you may notice that your, when you do this, that your characters kind of have a delay compared to your keyframe. So now you can see the characters not exactly aligned with that plane anymore. Okay. And you will take you know, a couple of frames for it to arrive. The reason for this is um, within Golem, when you set up keyframes, those are interpolated linearly. When you are within Maya, um, Keyframes by default are going to be spline keyframes. So you'll have to go here and set it up to um, linear. And when you're in linear, obviously we'll change the animation off to your plane, but now you're having the same interpolation than within Golem. Um, obviously, I may understand that sometimes you want to use spline uh, tangent interpolation. So what you'll have to do is probably bake. Um, your animation from your locator is like bake one frame, one keyframe in every frame. So interpolation will not be taken into account anymore because you'll have one key one keyframe per frame. So no more interpolation. Here we're having interpolation between um, those blank keys, right? Those blank space between in this in between keys. Uh, if you are about to write one keyframe per frame, you will not have to uh, take um, advantage of interpolations. So within Golem and within uh, Maya, you'll have the exact same scene. So, okay, great. Um, so the really nice thing about this setup is that if you decide to um, reanimate something, let's say, for example, you want that um, plane to be here. And with this rotation, you just have to add the keyframe. And as soon as you add those keyframes, as we'll still have in the scene, um, those locators which are connected to the same keyframe array than the one I'm having before, um, it will still keep working. So here as well, it's been adding a um, spline interpolation. So I need to go into linear mode. So I'm not having offset anymore. But yeah, you're like dynamically linked to that. And also it also means that within your cache proxy, if you're, I mean, if you change send changes, let's say now you're having um, a cache with two characters within it, um, it will keep working properly because it's still applied as a post process. So your simulation can be different with as many characters as you want to, uh, as long as you stay with um, those orientations uh, around the white axis and you still have characters following it uh, properly. So all that helps and uh, see you into the next uh, video.